Hey everyone, if you're sick and tired of firing your hands and arms from the top, we're gonna show you today a different way to go about it where we transport the arm, specifically the left arm, transport it so then we can shoot the energy out, out front. So Milo Lines, Henry Fall, we're out here again at beautiful Superstition Mountain. And today we're gonna to be talking about sort of some lead arm feels, but also the chest and how those two correlate to create this sort of stretch and sling in transition. Now Milo, you've done some videos on this, but we're gonna talk about it maybe a little differently today. And we have a really good drill at the end of this video that we're gonna talk you through, so stay tuned on that. So this is a feel, again, you've talked about a little bit. So why do we like to create this sort of stretch and transition? Well, muscles that are loaded <laughs> like to unload fast. I should say muscles that load like to explode. <laughs> there you go, good saying. <laughs> muscles that load like to explode. Well, if we get things loaded up too soon, so if this gets too adducted across us early, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? It's gonna fire out a lot earlier. That's it's gonna sure. fire out earlier and we're gonna have to make room for it. Yep. So I like to see the, the final loading happening in that transitional flex phase. Milo, we were actually working a little bit on my golf swing before this video. And I told you about a little feel I've been kind of working on. And when I was in Dallas for uh, PGA school, I was really feeling like in transition, I was kind of um, feeling like my tension levels were a little lower in my arms in transition. And I really felt like I stretched into this lead arm. So we call this adduction. So the left arm kind of crossing into me. So I felt like I was kind of stretching into it, but it felt like I was sort of falling into it. So basically my sternum was working more into my bicep mm -hmm. as a way of putting it. And that stretched my whole shoulder out. And I felt like that gave me time for that, that chest to lower and the center mass to stay back. So then I could, I could kind of unwind in the proper arc. When my hands kind of fire out, sometimes the shaft gets a little steeper and I have to kind of offset that with a little more rise yes. in my pelvis and my chest kind of backing, my head backing away. Yeah, things back out. So it's kind of a chicken or egg thing. Which one is it? I don't know, they go together, yes. right? So for me, the feeling basically leave this up, leave that up and just kind of fall into it. Yep. And when I do that, it kind of puts this torque on the shaft where it goes that way, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Well, which, which you know, that's like free shallowing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a big piece of it. So the players that the center of mass falls back easiest for, that's mm -hmm. kind of what they're doing. They're, they're not applying an early arm force mm -hmm. in the transition phase. So falling sort of into that left arm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like your sternum is getting kind of closer to that yeah, slightly. Arm. Slightly. Yeah. It's not a big, it's not a big move. It's not like it goes whoop and plasters. Yeah. It's just kind of that, you know, maybe one or two degrees. Yeah. But it's definitely not going this way in that early, in that early transition phase. Well, and I feel the stretch kind of in my tricep and then up my shoulder. Uh -huh. And that's, that's where, that's where I feel it in transition as that chest is kind of falling. I feel like this is all stretched out. Yeah, that back side of your arm is yeah, is loaded up. The the way I can kind of an analogy for you would be if you go to the gym and you go to a cable rack and you put the weight on maximum, really heavy weight, so you really couldn't move it. And you basically get the the little rope, you would attach that to the cable, take that rope and it just in your you could just do it in your lead arm and just kind of hold the rope and then you're not pulling, you're not trying to move the weight, you're just kind of leaving it there and you kind of fall into that arm and you're gonna feel that load or stretch across that, that lead shoulder. So that might be a nice feeling you could do. Mm -hmm. Just like we've seen with Padraig Harrington grabs a golf cart, yep. just like this. So something like that could be a nice feeling for you to, to feel that. Now, really important, when we talk about this stretch, this stretch I'm feeling, I'm not stretching it this way deeper. I'm not trying to drop my hands back down or behind me so much. I'm just trying to kind of leave them up and then they can kind of go with my pivot. 
I think that's important to note because sometimes I see people try to create that stretch and they go this way where it like drops back behind them. Yeah, that, and when they do that, their trail arm is pulling, retracting back behind them and now their trail arm gets a little trapped. Yeah. So in reality, if we watch what's happening from an arm level, as I'm stretching this, my rib cage is bending. This scapula is depressing. It's actually kind of dropping down because yeah. here it's kind of retracted and then it's going to depress. And now my right arm's kind of under. You got a little window here. Yeah. So there's a few things going yeah. on. Plus you're, plus you're unwind. You're starting to unwind your chest. So the the rotation of my sternum going more to the target. If I just leave my arm here and I turn my chest, that's pulling into that arm too, where I get yes. that stretch. So there's a lot of little things going on, but I just want to make that clear is that just because I'm leaving this up and feeling that stretch, it doesn't mean I'm actively trying to pull my arm more into it. Yeah. To me, it's more my chest going into my arm. Does that make sense? Sure. A little counterintuitive way. It's not pulling, it's falling into it. If that makes sense. I have some of my own feels that I don't talk about a lot, <laughs> but what I actually feel is I feel my, I feel a lot of it in my trail hand and I feel like my trail hand is putting an up force on my yeah. lead arm. I like that. This way. But when it happens, because it's putting an up force like this, my elbow's not going backwards and yeah. getting trapped. So. Well, that, and that kind of goes with your your doorknob feel, which we've done before. Yeah. But what I associate with that too, is that you've always talked about the, the trail arm feeling under the lead arm. So like a hitter, a hitting pattern, right? Yeah. So a baseball hitter like this. Yeah, that's. So that's your feel right there. Yeah. Lead arm, trail arm, you know, both those feels can work. Yeah. And that's where you might want to figure out what, what works best for you. You are, a, we're both right-handed. But I'm just saying as far as the stretch where I'm feeling it, well, that's the what stretch is there. Helps me get the stretch and it turns my right arm off because I want my right arm to do none of this crap. Yeah, you don't want it going extending out and you don't want it to go into internal rotation. You want to just feel like you leave it or yeah. maybe even move a little the other way. Exactly. Okay, so I promised you guys that we would have a drill for this stretch falling into the lead arm and we kind of call it a buggy whip drill. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tension level way down. In fact, I'm gonna turn this club upside down for a second, okay? We're talking like not even one on a one to 10 scale. So okay. you could take this club right in my hands basically. So you feel that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So really light tension. Now, what I might do is even start with one hand, my left hand. Start kind of making a little sequence here to get going. Now I'm gonna go up to the top Big wind up, it's a nice width. And then I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna throw this club like a Frisbee, okay? Now, some of you might find right off the bat, you want to add a lot of outward force and tension early. Extend that left arm. I want you to have it more, a little more limp and almost let your left arm fold just a little bit. Okay. Again, creating that stretch in your shoulder and tricep here. So it's really feeling this way. And then from here, just turn, 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 and feel like you sling the energy way out front. Okay? So, could start with a little bit of that. Whoosh. So I really feel like this, this grip end is really heavy right in here, even though we know this is the lighter part of the club. Mm -hmm. So I really feel the whoosh out front. So you see my left arm extends, but it's out here. It's not extending back here. Okay, now, once I've made this feel heavy, this should feel even more heavy. It should heavy. feel very heavy. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I'm not swinging very hard at this. Probably don't wanna swing really hard with just your left arm. It might fly off. <laughs> Stretch and transition chest going down into that arm. Now, you could hit one like that. Not very good. <laughs> you could miss. That's a hard drill. Oh, it's very hard. All right, let me try to get one good this time. That hey, was pretty good. You got that one pretty good. Okay, 
Okay, so I got that feel though. I'm gonna use two hands, same tension level, really light. So this is what we call the buggy whip drill. So I kind of got that buggy whip going where I'm kind of going opposing the club that's going up still as I'm going down and around, okay? So it's kind of going whoosh like that. So you see I'm opposing, the club is going up, I'm going down and around. So just like that left arm feel. So let me try to hit a few like that. That one was really nice. It's a little bigger this time. Yep. Still the tension staying down, especially in the arms. Yeah, that was a little more full. That was, I bet, pretty nice on video. I'll bet it was really nice. That was a good swing. One thing I want to add in here is you went from, you know, pretty slow to full. Way Fair, too fast. <laughs> fairly quickly, right? It Way was too only fast. two swings, three swings. It's a video. We don't want to make it last two weeks. <laughs> so a lot of this needs to be done yeah. slower than for you guys at home. You need to do yeah. this like over the course of weeks, not like. I should have hit like 50 or 100 of them short of this yellow flag. Yeah, that's like that yellow flag is like 70 yards. So we're hitting nine irons short for a long time learning the sequence. Yeah. Let me do a proper one where I do it that shorter distance. How about that? Okay. But sort of that fuller motion. So arms so you float. See that rehearsal. Arms float. It's like this is staying up. So that would be more the one I would start out at right there. Yeah, and you get good where that looks correct, and then you make it go 10 yards farther, and then yep. 10 yards farther. And But if I had to go play golf right now, now I could just say, okay, here I am on the course. My little pre shot routine is buggy whip, buggy whip. I really feel that little stretch and sling, low tension levels, and now I can just go into my shot and just feel that, even in my waggles and everything, and just carry it over into my real shot. So much more flowing, much less firing. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Hopefully you guys like this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are up. And come join us at Milo Lines Golf where we can help you one-on-one. -on -one. This feel might be awesome for you or it might not be the best feel for you. We don't know. So we need to see your swing and help you on a individual basis, okay? So come uh, join our academy and we'll get working with you today.